So Congress just came back from its long summer recess, and what was the most important thing on its agenda? Well, it wasn't trying to deal with the staggering food prices or the cost of living in general or the horrific heat wave that has hit so many Americans this summer. It is in bipartisan fashion declaring this week China Week, or we should call it China Bashing Week. And we have seen statement after statement and bills and resolutions blaming China for everything from the fentanyl crisis to child labor in the Congo. Let me give you a couple of examples of the bills on Congress's plate. Counter China's Communist Party threats, increase sanctions on China, raise tariffs on imports from China, stop China's expansion of nuclear energy, stand with Taiwan, confront Chinese human rights abuses, declare our energy independence from China, no American land for Communist China Act, combat the negative environmental impact of Chinese investments in Africa. Oh, and my favorite, prohibit funding for any documents that refer to the general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party, Xi Jinping, by the title president, which of course was passed by overwhelming voice vote. So anytime we talk about wanting to live in peace with China, we're told you're getting paid by the Communist Party of China. Even Nancy Pelosi said, go back to your headquarters in China. I just want to make it clear. We're not getting a cent from the Communist Party of China. We have our headquarters in Los Angeles. And I don't even know anybody in the Communist Party of China. But I do know that China is the latest boogeyman to justify the horrific trillion dollar Pentagon slash security budget. And I think we should give some advice to Congress this week. Instead of bashing China, why don't you focus on improving the lives of Americans? Why don't you stop trying to make the US the hegemonic single superpower in what is already a multi-power world? Let's declare together, China is not our enemy.